Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're here to talk about uh, using Tag Manager um, in connection with your Google Analytics on your WordPress site. Um, this is my blog at ryan.ca, and I'm just going to go ahead and choose my uh, Create Custom 3D Text with Blender um, blog post. Um, it's a video uh, tutorial for the most part, but I do also have a um, PDF uh, document here with some uh, written instructions that um, that users can download um, if they want to print something or, or, or read something on a second monitor as they go through the steps on their own time. Uh, one of the things about Google Analytics is that um, although uh, I will know if somebody visits my page, I actually really can't tell via analytics on their own whether or not they've downloaded um, this PDF or uh, opened it in a new tab. Um, the reason being is that we embed the analytics code into the web page um, using a plugin uh, or some other method in WordPress and uh, the PDF itself uh, when it's activated doesn't contain um, that code. Um, so what we do is we can actually use Google Tag Manager um, to create an event where it looks for a PDF style doc or a PDF document um, being triggered by a click and uh, records it into our analytics. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Tag Manager and assuming you've set up an account already um, you won't have any container so I'm going to create a new container and choose create container and enter my domain name and it is a website and I'm going to press create. Uh, this bit of code that they sh show here is the snippet that you would use um, if you're making a basic HTML website and we're copying and pasting the source um, into the code or into the code of your website. Um, in this case, we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to press OK. If you ever need to retrieve that code again, you can go to admin. Make sure you have the right container selected and choose install Google Tag Manager and you can access that code again. So we're going to go to container. And uh, what we can see here is that um, we have tags, triggers, variables, and folders. So um, the three that we'll focus on today will be tags, triggers, and variables. So a tag is something that you want to flag. A trigger is basically um, what triggers it, and variables are um, just um, things where you can store information that you're going to use on a regular basis. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. Actually, I'm a liar. The first thing we're going to do is um, go connect our uh, Google Tag Manager to our analytics. So I'm actually going to go back to admin and I'm going to choose, I can leave it here actually, and then I'm going to go to uh, my WordPress dashboard. I'm going to go to plugins and I can see my installed plugins. I'm going to search for Google Tag Manager and it's going to search for my installed plugins. Obviously, I don't have this plugin yet. Um, so, uh, but what it does do is bring up this link for search plugins in the WordPress plugin directory. I'm going to press that. And then it, bringing, it transfers my keywords over and uh, does a search for me. And if we take a look here, um, this one here, Duracell Tommy's Google Tag Manager for WordPress, um, has been updated within the last three weeks. It's comp compatible with my version of WordPress, has five stars all around, and uh, 50,000 active installs. So I say this, I'm pretty confident that this one will work, do what we need it to do. I'm going to press install now. And it's going to kick me back to my WordPress and let me know that it's been successfully installed. I'm going to activate the plugin. And I'm going to find the Google Tag Manager for WordPress and I'm going to press settings. And uh, I'm going to go grab uh, the container number from my container. And actually the one you saw there was from a previous installation, but this is our new one. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go back to here replace that one or just paste it in. And I want it at the footer. I'm done really Tag Manager. Um, uh, is collecting things after the entire page is loaded. So you want to let all the code on the page load before your um, tag manager even loads. Um, that way uh, you've got a better chance that everything will be loaded um, when you are start listening for your actions. I'm going to press save changes. And now uh, this code is going to be active um, in Google Tag Manager for my blog website. Um, they do have a lot of other tabs here I can see um, for probably some advanced settings. So as you get to know Google Tag Manager a bit better, you may want to go through these and uh, see what kind of options they give you. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the Google Tag Manager and I'm going to go to Container. 
and we're in our container. You can see that I'm now editing version 1 and that the container has not been published and I have zero tags, zero triggers, and zero variables. So the first thing we want to do actually is create a variable and this is um, whenever you set up a tag you usually specify um, which Google Analytics account it should be listening for so uh, or sending the, the data to. So we're going to create a variable um, for our Google Analytics but first um, I tend to use these click elements a lot. I do a lot of click tracking with uh, Google Tag Manager so we're just going to enable all of these and then I'm going to create a new user defined variable. I'm going to press new and I'm going to call it Universal Analytics Tracking Code. I'm going to make it a constant and the variable that I'm going to put in here is actually my Google Analytics tracking code. So if I go back to my analytics and I choose admin, make sure that I'm in the ryan.ca container, I'm going to click on JS tracking info, tracking code, and I'm going to copy my Google Analytics tracking code going to go back to Google Tag Manager, paste the variable in there, and press create variable. So now I have the custom variable UA-tracking code. Now I'm going to go to tags and I want to create a new tag for tracking PDFs. So I'm going to press new. I'm going to name the tag UA for Universal Analytics dash PDF download. You're going to choose the product as Google Analytics because that's what we're reporting to. Uni Universal Analytics is the tag type because it's a new installation of Analytics. Tracking ID, here it is asking for that Google Analytics tracking code. I'm going to press on this icon and see a list of variables available including the click elements that I just enabled and the UA tracking code that we just created. I'm going to change the track type to event and then it kind of created three options for me. So we've got um, our category and we have an action and we have a label. So for the category the type of action we're going to do recording is a click and the action is a download click and label, what I actually want the label to be if we go back here is the text um, of the link itself because that is the best descriptor of what the PDF document is. So we're going to go back here and I'm going to click on this drop down here and we're going to choose one of those variables we enabled called click text which is the text of the link that you're clicking. And we're going to leave the rest of the settings and we're going to press continue. And you can see that our information is uploaded here. Uh, we're going to have it set to trigger on click. So it's only going to listen for the um, for the code every time someone clicks something. Um, technically this is just a link but we're going to leave it as all elements and I'm going to press continue and we're going to say some clicks and in this click case we're going to go with the click URL ends with and then I'm going to go with PDF because that's the extension of the uh, if we take a look here inspect we can see that the uh, the click URL here ends with PDF. Close the inspector, go back to Google Tag Manager, and oh, we're going to name this trigger. So I want to call this trigger UA uh, PDF. Actually, we'll call it click PDF. So the trigger is when they click a PDF document. I'm going to press create trigger. So now my PDF download is triggered when they click a PDF and we've got all the settings set here so I'm going to hit create tag. So now um, this tag's been created. If I go back to triggers I can see that I've got the trigger created for anything that ends with PDF and we've got, if we scroll down, my variable UA tracking code. So if I go back to the overview you can see that I have one tag, one trigger, and one variable. Currently my container is not published, but we don't actually pu want to publish it right away. We want to start off um, by uh, checking it out. So we're going to go uh, to this drop down arrow here and we're going to choose preview. 
And what's going to happen, it's going to create a bar up here to let me know that I'm in preview mode. So if I go back to my blog, what's going to happen is that a, I'm going to actually refresh the page. You can see here that this uh, bar appeared at the bottom. And what this is, is the Google Tag Manager preview bar. So you can see that you have tags fired on this page and tags not fired on this page. So we can see the UA uh, Universal Analytics PDF download tag that we created, but it has not fired on the page. When I refreshed it, um, the page was just loaded. But we're going to go ahead and scroll down and find my PDF link. And I'm going to click it. And I have that PDF set to open in a new window so I can go back to my page. And you can see that the UA PDF download has fired. It's appeared on the tab or uh, the tags fired section and it's now missing from the tags not fired on this page. So we uh, can see here that the tag has been fired. Now another thing when you're previewing this information is that if we go back to uh, reporting in our analytics and we choose real time and then overview and then sorry, we'll go to events because these are click events that we're tracking. We can see that um, already, um, even though we're in preview mode, um, the real-time event still tracks those clicks. So we can see that um, I've had a click event uh, with the category click, a download click. If I click on the event category, you can see it creates a filter here. So keep an eye on this. If you're uh, uh, browsing around, you may have to turn these filters off to look at other types of data. Um, but you can see that we have one download click and uh, with the event label, uh, create 3D text um, and the PDF document here. So we can see the name of the file that we're downloading. Um, this information will also be stored later in, uh, da, 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 I think maybe behavior, events, behavior, and then events. Um, you can go to top events and you can see um, uh, it'll start to collect them in a reporting sense. You can also through customization, um, create custom reports that use a specific event category like click or um, the event action download click um, so that you can generate reports of the different uh, files that have been downloaded on your website um, uh, for the date ranges in Google Analytics. So it lets you do some pretty advanced reporting. Um, so uh, now that we've seen that this is working, I want to turn it on permanently so that it continues to record um, these download clicks of PDFs on my website. Um, so uh, we can see it's still in preview mode here. Um, because I'm confident, what I'm going to go ahead and do is click publish. And one thing I want you to notice is that we're now editing version one. So as soon as I press publish, I'm going to say I have three unpublished changes, one tag, one trigger, and one variable. I'm going to press publish now and we're going to press done and automatically it sets me into editing version two so the last version that edited was version one as soon as you start making changes um, we could add more tags more triggers do more previewing meanwhile pu uh, version one is public and and live so um, basically you're automatically working on version two once you have version two set up you can publish and then it'll bring you into version three so you can constantly make edits um, and add new tags um, to track different campaigns that kind of thing um, there's lots of stuff you can do lots of click events you can do uh, carousels if you want to know um, how many people are accessing specific pages through your carousels or through your sidebars um, that kind of thing um, there's ways that you can create custom uh, triggers to trigger on those events um, using a variety of methods and maybe we'll go through uh, some of them a little bit later um, I hope that this is helpful for you um, in, uh, you know, adding click event tracking to your WordPress page. Um, if you'd like to read more blogs like this or uh, watch more tutorials like this, um, please feel free to subscribe um, to uh, to my channel on YouTube. Um, you can as well, you can follow me on Twitter uh, or visit my blog at ryan.ca. Uh, thanks for uh, sticking with me today and uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care.